Hello from Median Technologies, and welcome to our Imaging 101 series, short subject webinars on the fundamentals of imaging in clinical trials. In this session, Medical Imaging in Oncology Review, you will learn the fundamentals of medical imaging in oncology, basic terms, and advantages and disadvantages of various imaging modalities. Medical imaging is used to show exact anatomical locations and extent of disease. It provides information on tumor response to therapies. It also enables the continual assessment of a patient's disease state, along with the response to treatment, all with minimal discomfort to the patient, since it's generally non-invasive. Medical imaging provides digital images for quantitative measurement of endpoints to determine the success of the trial. It is important to understand the definition of imaging biomarkers, since they are fundamental to what is assessed on a medical image. A biomarker is a biological characteristic that is objectively measured and evaluated as an indicator of normal versus pathological processes. A common example of a biomarker is body temperature. An imaging biomarker is a biological characteristic that is detectable on a medical image. Imaging biomarkers can be anatomical or functional. Imaging biomarkers can be qualitative, descriptive only. For example, is there a nodule in the lung? The answer would contain no specific measure, just a yes or no. Another example, is there a diffused disease present in the organ? Again, the response would be a yes or a no, with no measured information. Imaging biomarkers can also be quantitative, objectively measured, such as the size of a tumor. For example, the longest diameter of the nodule decreased by 5 mm after treatment as compared with its size before treatment. In this case, the size of the tumor is a quantitative biomarker. Endpoints are the outcomes of a trial used to determine if a therapy is safe and effective. Once a patient reaches an endpoint, he or she is generally removed from the trial. Clinical endpoints are hard endpoints such as patient death. Surrogate endpoints are substitutes for a clinical endpoint and correlate with clinical benefit. An imaging biomarker can become a surrogate endpoint after going through a rigorous qualification and validation process. Digital Imaging and Communications in Medicine, or DICOM, is the international standard image format for clinical data. It is an important standard because it allows the sharing of data from different clinical sites. DICOM is an information technology standard that allows devices that produce, display, send, store, retrieve, or print imaging data to work together and understand the content of information contained in the file. It allows users to produce, manage, and distribute images regardless of equipment vendor or location, and ensures that all images can be uploaded, transferred, and read independent of the model or manufacturer of the imaging equipment used to acquire the images. Wherever you are, you can send and receive DICOM files and analyze the data, which is critical to a successful clinical trial and understanding tumor response to treatment. Images can be viewed by different orientations, axial, coronal, and sagittal. Axial divides the body into superior and inferior positions, such as head and feet. It is also called the transverse plane. Coronal divides the body into dorsal and ventral, so front to back. And sagittal divides the body into left and right sides. Let's move on to the different imaging modalities, or technologies used for taking medical images. X-ray is the simplest and most famous imaging modality. It produces a 2D image and is best for imaging the skeleton, since bones show very well on X-rays. An X-ray machine sends out a beam of X-rays at the patient that are captured on the other side by an X-ray film or a digital detector. X-rays either get blocked or pass through the body depending on the density of the matter that they encounter. The resulting image shows regions with different densities depending on how much body, fat, muscle, bones has been passed through by X-rays. The advantages of X-ray imaging are that it's a low-cost modality widely available and portable. Some disadvantages are that it exposes the patient to radiation, is limited to 2D, and has a limited color spectrum. Computed tomography, or CT, 
uses X-rays to produce a three-dimensional image in all three orientations, axial, coronal, sagittal. Computed tomography is an imaging modality that scans the body into sections. The width of each section is referred to as the slice thickness. The resulting data is the volume of the patient under study. CT, MRI, and PET are all tomographic methods. The most widely used imaging modality is CT. It generates anatomical information and is often used to assess lesion size in oncology. X-rays are aimed at the patient and are attenuated or scattered based on the density of the tissue. A new image is taken every few millimeters. The less dense the material, such as fat, the more black it appears on the image. The more dense the material, such as bone, the lighter it appears. At the end, you will get different gradient zones depending on the passing of the X-rays. Modern CT scanners contain up to 256 X-ray emitters and detectors to produce ultra-fast image acquisition times. CT scans can also involve the use of contrast agents. These are injected or swallowed liquids with a specific density that are used to highlight a particular organ, vascular structure, or anatomical region. The advantages of CT imaging are that it produces cross-sectional views of the body, allows the use of contrast agents, and has a rapid acquisition time. The disadvantages are the cost of the equipment, which can be quite high, and the patient's exposure to radiation. The standard magnetic resonance imaging modality, commonly known as MRI, provides anatomical imaging. It produces three-dimensional images using a magnetic field and radio waves and does not use radiation, which is its biggest advantage. The magnetic field strength is measured in Tesla, or T, which typically ranges from 1.5 to 3 Tesla. MRI produces images based on the spin of hydrogen nuclei, such as those found in water. Advanced MRI provides functional imaging. Two main MRI sequences are often used. The first is dynamic contrast-enhanced MRI. For this one, a contrast agent is injected into the patient through a vein to enhance anatomical structures. This makes blood vessels more visible, allowing tumor angiogenesis to be followed up in patients with cancer. The second is diffusion-weighted imaging, or DWI. It measures the diffusion of water in tissues and is very useful to assess ischemia and vascular changes in tumors related to malignancy or treatment response. The advantages of MRI are that no radiation is better for patients, and this modality is superior to CT for visualizing soft tissue, such as brain tumors. The disadvantages of MRI are that it is more costly and time-consuming than CT. Also, patients can become claustrophobic in the magnetic tube, and ferromagnetic objects, such as some pacemakers, can be dislodged. The final modality we will review is positron emission tomography, commonly known as PET. This nuclear imaging modality is based on the use of radio-labeled tracers with tracking of their distribution throughout the body. A radioactive isotope is chemically attached to a biologically important molecule. The radio-labeled tracer releases energy, or positrons, as it decays, which is detected and recorded to create an image. Radioactive decay lasts for a specific and defined amount of time called half-life. The half-life of each radioisotope is unique to that isotope. PET also produces 2D and 3D images and is a great example of a functional imaging modality. A commonly used tracer is called fluorodeoxyglucose, or FDG, used in an FDG PET scan. Metabolic changes using FDG PET can be detected earlier than anatomical changes, such as an increase in tumor size. You can see that on the PET image on the right-hand side versus the CT scan on the left. The tumor is visible on both scans on the top left corner. Again, CT would be used to find out the limits of the tumor, whereas PET would be used to find out whether the tumor under study is malignant or not, but would not be accurate enough to provide information on the tumor limits. That is why we often use both modalities together, PET and CT. PET advantages include metabolic changes that can be detected earlier than anatomical changes. PET can provide simultaneous functional and anatomic data when combined with CT, and it provides easier detection of early-stage tumors. 
Disadvantages include low spatial resolution when not combined with CT, radiation exposure, potential allergy or adverse response to the radio tracer, and the high cost. This concludes our quick tour of medical imaging in oncology. We hope you were able to learn more about how medical images are used in oncology and the various modalities that create them. Thank you for joining us for this Imaging 101 module. If you would like to learn more about media and technologies or to watch the rest of our Imaging 101 series, please visit www.mediantechnologies.com.